Hello everybody. My name is Iftikhar Khan and today we will be starting with a new collection overview of the excretory system. And the topic for today's lesson is an introduction to the excretory system. So shortly about me, uh, I got 10th rank in AIMS 2013. Presently I am a 6th semester student in AIMS. I got 57th rank in NEET and I have also been selected for the Biology Olympiad and I have been an KB Best Scholar. And also don't forget to follow me on UN Academy. This is a link. So now we'll start with the first question. Before reading about the excretory system, we need to understand what is excretion. So as the definition goes, it is the removal of waste products of metabolism and other non-useful material from the body fluids of an organism. So we can take the help of an analogy. It is the excretory system is similar to the water purifiers. So the excretory system is similar to the water purifier and the blood is similar to the water. So in this in the way that a water purifies purifies or cleanses the water in the same way the excretory system purifies or cleanses our blood or the any bloody any body fluid present in a particular organism and the biological system which is involved in the process of excretion is called excretory system there are various stages of excretory system and from the very basic excretory system present in the lower vertebrates to the modern excretory system the most developed excretory system present in the mammals and we human beings so let's get started so first of all uh, we'll before talking about the human excretory system in this lesson i'll talk about the excretory system in lower organisms so the first classification is based on nitrogenous excretory products so it's of three types the organisms that excrete ammonia are called ammonotelic organisms those organisms excreting urea as their main excretory product are ureotelic ureotelic and see the difference the ones who are excreting uric acid are uricotelic so the the ones excreting urea were ureo and the one with uric acid are urico so you should know the difference so let's start with a brief comparison of the three organisms the ammonotelic the ureotelic and the uricotelic organisms first of all we'll start with ammonotelic organisms the monotelic organisms you can take care that they are all the organisms that have plenty of water around them they have abundance of water and because ammonia the excretion of ammonia leads a lot of water they need to be in a water, in an environment which is full of water and water conservation is not a concern of all the three waste material the ammonia is most toxic of the lot and the organ of excretion is basically the gill and it is removed as ammonium ions now we'll come to the ureotelic organisms ureotelic and uricotelic organisms are basically which need some conservation of water and do not have an abundance of water ureo ureotelic organ ureotelic organism have and uh, have a toxicity in urea it which is intermediate between uric acid and ammonia it is less toxic than ammonia and more toxic than uric acid while the solubility in water is also intermediate and so is the water loss and the organ of excretion is mainly the kidney it's not the gill surface it's mainly the kidney 
while the uric acid it's least soluble in water it's least toxic and it leads to the least excretion of water it is excreted in the form of pellets or paste if you have seen bird poop you, it's an example of uric acid and the excre organ of excretion is again the kidney itself so let us take a look at some examples of the three categories so as i said a monotelic organism are the aquatic organisms which live in abundance of water it includes bony fishes the aquatic amphibians the tadpole the aquatic insects and all the aquatic invertebrates from the poriferans in all the categories in all the phyla all the aquatic invertebrates are coming in a monotelic organisms the ureotelic organisms include uh, mammals and take note marine fishes this is very important because marine fishes need to conserve water it's because though they are in abundance of water but the water around them is hypertonic so what happens is they keep on losing water inside inside always and they need to conserve a bit of water so they are ureotelic and all the terrestrial amphibians are ureotelic as i have told you before tadpoles are amonotelic so you need to take care of that tadpoles are amonotelic but terrestrial amphibians like frog are ureotelic now we will come to uricotelic organisms uricotelic organisms include the terrestrial arthropods reptiles birds and land snails so all these organisms need a lot of conservation of water so in order to conserve water they need to have minimal water loss in the form of uric acid excretion so now just for mcq point of view we will take a look at some specific organs of excretion you will read in detail about these in the in the chapter on animal classification and bio biodiversity biological diversity and the animal kingdom so just in brief so first we'll the one of the um, uh, specific organs of excretion is flame cell or protonephridia it is an organ of osmoregulation what does the term osmoregulation mean it means the balance of fluid and and the ions of a body it maintains fluid and ion balance of the body so the flame cells are pre present in platyhelminths though that are the flat worms rotifers and some annelids you don't need to go into detail of which annelids but some few annelids do have it as the ncrt states and then we have cephalochordates the uh, and one of the example is amphioxus cephalochordates example is amphioxus the next ones are nephridia they are present in most of the annelids including earthworm so earthworm is an example of the organ of excretion having nephridia malpighian tubules are present in most of the insects including cockroaches and antennal or green gland are present in crustaceans so this will be it for this lecture and in the next lecture we'll start with the human excretory system so this is the basic knowledge and all you need to know about the lower organisms and their processes of excretion so thank you everybody for this first lesson in this collection and don't forget to join me in the next lecture thank you